What's up, you guys? Hopefully some of you guys don't have epilepsy and freaked out at that intro. So uh, let me show you what that was. So here in Ableton, I one of my new favorite plugins is RocketVid. And what this allows you to do is it lets you sync visuals and manage them easily inside of Max for Live for Ableton uh, very easily. And so I'm now starting to rethink my DJ setup so I can have some visuals now. So instead of just like Tractor or Pioneer stuff, I can now kind of think about integrating Ableton into my live stuff to have some visuals that are synced up to things that I want. So I'll kind of, uh, and again, RocketVid is a very cheap plugin. It's like 24 bucks. I think it's totally worth it. It's for Max for Live, so you have to be in uh, the full Ableton, uh, the full version of Ableton, not standard, not light, only in uh, Ableton, the full version you can, uh, you know, use rocket vid so it's a max for live plugin so i'll show you some of the things about that i like so let's go to the packet that it came with so uh right here we see rocket vid and it comes with a few movies that you can use already out of the gate so just to mess around with it and it plays movie files so it doesn't play like mp4s or things like that it just plays movie files so luckily if you're in macintosh computers if you have quicktime uh, when you can uh, bring most videos into QuickTime and export them out as a movie file, so it's really convenient for me. But if you're in PCA, I think that could uh, there's probably something similar to that. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm already starting to make a few movie files for my own stuff, and uh, it's been a really fun plugin to mess around with. And it also has a few settings for this plugin as well. I like to just bring in the uh, just the rocket vid default by itself and then you know kind of mess around with it so let me quickly explain this plugin so here we have this little box that turns the screen off and on and if you're in ableton 9 you can uh you know have this routed to a second screen window or you can engage the second screen and then you can push this off or you can just drag this out into other monitors and video outputs and things like that so um yeah, this turns the screen on and off. This is the play button. This is where you drop in the movies. So if you have several movie files, you can switch between those um, using these little left and right arrows. This switches it. And so we have we see that there's a section called uh, manual. So we can switch the uh, that to autopilot, which would uh, you know kind of dictate, and you can uh, s uh, tr have a trigger sensitivity to kind of go in between other clips, and you know it'll be more dynamic to what you're playing. Uh, this allows you just to kind of turn that off, bypass it, kind of just control these on your own if you want, and uh, to switch the videos um, anyway. So uh, let's see. Then we have camera setup. So I've only had this plugin crash on me a few times because I was trying to uh, do the camera setup while it was playing. So you really have to have this stopped and then set all that up. So, you know, um, I'm not sure how it really works. I haven't really gotten it. I haven't really messed around with it too much. Um, then we have the things like uh, the movie uh, loop. So this right here is like a little timeline representing where the video is. So right here, this is the beginning of the video, the end of the video, and this is where the video is currently at. And then you can also move these little left and uh, these little arrows to kind of make a loop. So you can have a smaller section of the video play and things like that. Then you have the speed of the video, so you can uh, have the speed uh, fluctuate. So. Uh, like let's take this cat video for a second let me turn off the the dry wet over here so if I for this cat video let's say I wanted to play super fast uh, it's playing faster than it is now if I have it on slow it's like barely moving so so you can you know kind of mess with that let me see I don't I yeah I guess you could automate uh, you could uh, map that to a parameter control the speed but I think that would be kind of I don't know I wouldn't do that it seems like messing with the speed would kind of make it want to crash I don't know I, I would have to experiment with it but this plugin seems really great and it handles the video very well doesn't eat up a lot of CPU and it, it really makes the way I was doing visuals before I was using other uh, programs with uh, tractor or whatever and or even looking at like having another computer on Reslum and then you know buying like a like a time like a master clock to sync two computers in between them so like one computer with the Reslum and another computer playing Ableton and all that crap 
but then you know that's already like a few hundred or dollars in setup and things like that so i was really just for me 24 dollars for a plugin that kind of does it all in one computer is kind of great and so if you had a projector or something else you can kind of turn to invest in things like that or whatever and so uh, then we have all the like the little effects here. So we have error, which kind of just makes this like glitchy. Let me show you actually all the effects real quick. So let me turn off all the modulation stuff I have going on. So I can reset the whole pl uh, the whole thing right here. Uh, let me turn up the dry wet actually. So that's what error looks like. It's kind of this. It kind of freezes the screen and does these color things. And candy's the one I like because it gives you that strobing effect, sorta. So that's the one I like to have on square, and then you know have it sync to one over two or one over four, so it's synced to you know the BPM. So uh, yeah. And then let me turn that off. And then there's rainbow, which kind of does this cool like squares thing. And again, all of these parameters you can, uh, you know, you I can have this on a saw and then sync it to you know random or one over eight or things like that. Or no, I mean uh, I can have this on random, and it will just kind of then set that to like one bar, and it'll just randomly you know just do its own thing. Or we can have it a little faster at like 1 over 16. Um, or we can have it, I, I kind of prefer 1 over 2 for random. Or we could just have it on square and it just kind of jumps from top to bottom. And so that's that. And then there's lo-fi. Which kind of does a like pixelation type of effect, and then we have warp. So warp is just madness, and then we have stark, which is like the trippiest one yet. So this one is definitely the most fun to have, uh, you know, mapped to a like knob or something. So I already have this mapped on onto my Akai MPK MIDI uh, mini. I mean, so this is just a small little keyboard that costs hundred bucks that. I only use now for visual stuff or you know some mapping things so it's kind of cool if you just have your your, your laptop with an Akai um, maybe tractor or you know DJM 800 or something like that and you know you can just use all of those to kind of really do a performance and uh, have all these crazy visual things going on at the same time and then we have ghosts which kind of does this weird thing it's kind of like being really high. That's what it looks like to me. It just looks like everything's kind of slowed down or kind of like, I don't know, drags along. So yeah, <laughs> it just looks like, you know, like that kind of thing. And then we have movie cam, which I think switches to whatever the camera settings are. I'm not sure about that one yet. So I think it switches. I have no idea. And then the dry wet. So uh, I have that mapped as well so you know stark and uh, dry wet you can see I'm moving those around that's on my keyboard so I'm just gonna set the dry wet up here stark there and the thing I like to do with this is I like to uh, if you have like a DJ set in Ableton on the different rows you can uh, map this to switch videos on different rows so uh, let's say I wanted to map this down arrow to uh, let me see this right here to this pad on my keyboard so when it switches down to another row it'll also switch the video so let me see it's a really good way to to just map all this stuff so you know it's good to you know map the up and down arrows the play arrows and the play here and you know the triggers to these and uh, you know all that stuff you can just map the heck out of this and you know really get crazy with this so really this thing comes alive when you created a crazy mapping system and uh, let me recommend one other plugin um, I haven't really had uh, I just found out about this the other day but someone told me that this capture uh, max for live device what it does is it screenshots like see you can see the little wheel right here that means it's collecting all the mapping stuff and all that data 
and it's collecting it and you can snapshot that so you just press capture and then it calls it snapshot one and then I think you can just reload that in again so or in the session so you, you just keep this somewhere in your session and then when you open up again all the mapping stuff is still there or you could recall different snapshots of it so if I did some different mappings and then uh, I switched uh, captured that it would be snapshot two so you can have different mapping setups inside of one Ableton uh, session so like let's say I want to change a few of the mapping stuff for you know like halfway through the set but I didn't want to actually do it in real time I could just do it just like right now in a time like this snapshot it and then you know switch it over so it's a really handy way to kind of turn a little small Akai MPK mini keyboard like mine which has like what 25 keys or something like that it's a great way to turn that into like two of these you know I could have a completely different setup for the second snapshot but again I'm not sure that's how it works but I believe that that's kind of the idea or at least that's what someone was telling me so I really have to mess with that one so uh, let me sh kind of just mess around with this and show you some of what it does so again this is kind of just syncing to the tempo and then you can just uh, autom add some modulation by like you know these rates and uh, that kind of stuff and then oh I didn't even explain that glow is a really cool uh, little thing here so glow is this when, when you click on it the the longer the video plays the more it intense the effects get so it kind of over time will get more and more crazy so that's kind of cool and like I said uh, you know I already have this mapped to a like a, a little pad on the keyboard so I can just switch video by clicking on it So yeah, it's really crazy to just how you can switch videos. So now if I go to this one, let me set the dry wet all the way down. So this one's called ISO. And the one I was playing before that was Kitty. So we have Kitty and ISO. And it, it responds pretty quickly to, you know, switching between them. You know, so I'm pretty impressed by that and it does like I said it doesn't eat up a lot of CPU switching between videos and managing them so it's really good stuff it's really good stuff so let's go back to packets let's bring in some more videos so I could show you guys from this from the default so we have this one called car so it's just a car driving around <laughs> which is so interesting now if we add some of the dry wet back in uh, let's press play so that these so the automation here or the modulation I should say uh, it starts kicking in and let's bring up that dry wet let's mess with the stark and like it's, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier but if you are on Mac and you have QuickTime you can make your own movie files so if I go to my desktop uh, and I go to crap. Maybe I deleted it already. Uh, let's see artworks Yeah, I think I deleted it, but I made this quick little like case aid, uh Like graphic for like it was just the uh, it was just like k-s-a-d-e Like coming out in different orders and it was just a really cool way to sync it to this one thing that I had going on in another song Oh, that was in another song anyway, but you know, it's really easy to just kind of make movie files. If you have QuickTime, you can just bring in any format into QuickTime and bounce that down into a, a movie file. So uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys like this and lights.